big screen. All right, hello everybody. It's Wednesday night, Facebook Live. Hallelujah. I pray you're doing well. Looking forward to our time together. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, we've got some good news, and uh, that is that uh, uh, our governor has given us some guidelines uh, for churches to reopen. Uh, some of them are a little bit restrictive. They they restrict our uh, attendance to 25% of the sanctuary space or 100 people um, total, which is really bad. If you're if you're a mega church with a couple thousand seat auditorium and they tell you you can only put 100 people in there, I think that's just a little crazy because uh, Costco and them have a lot more than that in there, you know. But uh, so we've got some uh, guidelines, and so we're working, uh, cleaning the building and uh, preparing things. And so we'll be uh, sending an email. We're getting a hold of everybody uh, to let you know uh, what some of the guidelines are. And, and so we're planning on having church Sunday morning at 10 a.m. And, uh, of course, you'll need a mask uh, when you come in. Uh, you might want to bring your hand sanitizer and uh, there'll be other things and yeah we're gonna we have to check your temperature when you come in check your sub temperature at home and if you're running a your temperature or you're not feeling well you need to stay home or if you're a high risk you need to stay home and then of course uh some people they're just not comfortable coming out and being around other people right now and that's okay you know so you need to stay home and and we're working to we're working to a uh, live stream uh but we may not have it all set up by by Sunday, but we will record the service and a few hours later it'll be available on YouTube. So if you're not able to make it, you will be able to uh, at least uh, see the service. Amen. Uh, of course, they've limited us where no children's ministry. So if your kids come, the kids got to stay with you, set with you. And, uh, you know, you got to just kind of hang in there. So uh, so we'll uh, we'll get you all the information, but we're excited about uh, being able to get back together and and of course, uh, no hugging and, and that stuff. We'll just we just gotta uh, kind of hold, we'll hold it and kind of wave to each other from from across the aisle or whatever, you know. Amen. So tonight, I just uh, as I was uh, uh, preparing, praying today, and and I want to talk today tonight about arising and crossing over. You know, we've been in lockdown and uh, we've been dealing with uh, all this onslaught of fear and intimidation and and everything that, that we've been dealing with. And I believe that that uh, uh, we're coming into a season of opportunity. And I believe that, that God is really ready to do something and he's looking for people that will uh, catch his heart, catch his vision uh, and uh, uh, follow what he's doing. And, and I believe that one of the things this lockdown did, and we've said it many times, is it's kind of a reset. It's kind of reset some things for a lot of people. It's kind of reset uh, how you uh, view God and how your uh, uh, love for Him and you're your, your, your maybe reevaluating your life, your walk with the Lord. Maybe it wasn't where it used to be, should be. And so you're, you're working to make it better. Amen. Hallelujah. And so if you look at Joshua chapter 1, and uh, this is, is uh, uh, God's commission to Joshua in Joshua chapter 1, verse 1. It said, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise and go over this Jordan, you and all this people to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. And every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you, as I said to Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites and to the great sea toward the, the going down of the sun shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage, for to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law 
which Moses my servant commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. You know, if you'll follow the the, the Bible and, and the, the principles of God, it will bless your life. Amen. It will it will help you. Glory to God. And uh, and it says verse eight said, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that's written in it. You know, we want to get the scripture in us and we want to get the principles of God in us so that we can draw upon them and they will help guide everything that we do. Hallelujah. It says to do all according to this written in, then you will make your way prosperous and then you'll have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And uh, to be dismayed means to lose courage generally because of fear. And uh, I believe that, that the Lord is, is preparing a people to uh, really come out of this thing with a refreshed vision, a renewed passion, and, and a heart after him that we're pressing in and saying, God, we just want whatever you, whatever you want us to do, whatever you want us to go. I mean, we, you've got things for us to do and places for us to be, people that we need to meet, people we need to minister to. And so I believe that God is, is doing something. Amen. And so no matter where you find yourself, you know, and as I was thinking about this, it's like, you know, God is with Joshua and, and he tells him, I'm going to be with you. He's with, if you read the Bible through story after story of how God was with the people of his loved people. Amen. And even in Joseph, in Genesis 39, 21, it said that the Lord was with Joseph in prison. So you might find yourself in maybe not the best situation right now, not the best circumstance, but God is still with you. God still loves you. God still cares about you. And the things he said about you and the promises he's made are still true today. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's like 19 times in, in uh, chapters 3 and 4 of Joshua that they speak to Joshua about crossing over. Cross over, cross over, cross over. And so I believe that, that God wants to take us where we're at individually and even corporately. And God wants to move us ahead, cause us to advance. And, and this whole thing with lockdown, you know, and people can be very uh, suspicious and fearful and everything else. And, and I believe we should be cautious. We should, you know, not just go crazy. But I believe that in the midst of all of this, God's bringing forth opportunities for the people of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If you look in, in uh, uh, Second uh, Kings in chapter uh, 7, and this is the story about when Syria besieged Samaria. They were in a famine, and uh, they were having all kind of difficulties. And the prophet comes out and says, tomorrow about this time, things are going to change. That means suddenly, suddenly things will change. And so uh, I believe that, that as we're coming out of this, that we're going to see sudden changes. We're going to see the things that God's promised really come back on the scene. And, and we're going to find out that he, he, he's still in charge and he still knows what's going on. But in verse 3 of uh, chapter 7 of Second Kings, it says that there were four leprous men at the entrance of the gate. And they said to one another, why are we sitting here until we die? See, if you never do anything, if you just sit around and, uh, uh, you know, why are we sitting here until we die? See, we can become very lethargic and very lazy. And, and through this whole lockdown, uh, I mean, I think we've probably watched more TV than, than we've ever have in our life. And, you know, you're like all of us. I mean, everybody's watching TV and, and doing all that kind of thing. And so it's time to start moving again. It's time to, to wake up. It's time to move forward. Hallelujah. And, and so he says, if we say we will enter the city, the famine is in the city and we'll die there. So they said, there's no use going in the city. You know, they're eating people. We'll die there. We're not going to go there. And if we sit here, we're going to die. And so he says, now, therefore, come, let us surrender to the army of the Syrians. If they keep us alive, we will live. And if they kill us, we shall only die. So they said, we might as well, we might as well take a risk. The best option we have is if we sit here, there's no food, we're going to die. If we go inside, there's nothing in there, we're going to die. So let's, let's surrender the, the, to the Syrian army. And if they keep us alive, well, then we'll live. And if they kill us, well, we're just going to be dead anyhow. 
And so they arose at twilight to go to the camp of the Syrians. And when they come to the outskirts of the Syrian camp, to their surprise, no one was there. You know, I think we're going to find that, that in our life there's times where, where there's things that we feared or things that we were, were a little bit uh, cautious about or, or held back from. And I'm not talking about this virus. I'm talking about just life in general. And in, we're going to find out that we, when we arrive at a certain place, sometimes the things that we feared or the things we were concerned about, we find out they're not even there. They're not even there. Amen. And it says that they, they were surprised. No one was there. And so it says, verse 6, For the Lord had caused the army of the Syrians to hear the noise of chariots, the noise of horses, the noise of a great army. So they said to one another, Look, the king of Israel has hired against us the kings of the Hittites, the kings of the Egyptians, to attack us. And so they arose and they fled. Left everything there. They just took off. And so what these lepers people thought was, well, maybe they'll kill us. And they go out and they find out that they, all the stuff's there, that everything is, is, is they, the enemy's gone, okay? And so they go and tell the people in the city, hey, these people are gone, the army's gone. They thought it was a setup. They were afraid to go out. So they said, we'll send a few people out. And, and if they attack us, then we'll know they're out there. And they found out it was all true, amen? And you're, you're about to find out some things in your life that God said is true. It's true. Hallelujah. Amen. And so I believe that God is preparing us. And uh, just like Joshua, the Lord said, Moses, my servant, is dead. And so he says, arise, cross over. And many times there's things that, that uh, uh, are in our life that kind of hold us back and, and, and pull us back. And we find out that we've been set free of them. God wants to release you from the things that restrict you and hold you back from doing what he wants you to do and what he's called you to do. Amen? And so we have to look at, there's, there's several areas, I believe, in several places that God is preparing us and working on us and adjusting us uh, so that we can move forward, so that you can cross over. And the first one is you got to leave the past behind, especially the negative past. You know, and even the good things. There's good things that we have experienced. And sometimes you want to camp at the good seasons in your life and not move forward. And listen, you can camp there as long as God has you camping there. You know, there's nothing wrong with camping. Some people love camping, but you can't camp in the same place all your life. Hallelujah. Amen. And so, so you know, you got to leave the past behind. Put it behind you. Disappointments, betrayals, hurts, mistakes, bad decisions. You know, you can't live in the past. Everybody has made a bad decision in life. Everybody has made them, all right? But the people, the people that recover get over it. They move beyond it, all right? They learn from their mistakes. They put the principles in place, and they say, well, I'm not doing that again, okay? But you have to break the fear of making mistakes all the time. God is not going to have you make mistakes all the time. If you listen to him, he'll guide and direct you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so we have to start transitioning. A transition means to move from one state, stage, or place to another, to change. It involves movement. Okay? And so I believe that, that some people get fed up where they're at. And they, they say, well, I'm tired of living this way. I'm tired of doing this. Well, you know, just don't do something to do something. But start pressing into God and ask God, what is it that, God, what is it I need to do? And start asking him. You'll seek me, the Bible says, and find me when you search with, for me with all your heart. If, you know, if you're too busy doing everything and he just gets the leftovers, you know, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. It's not going to do what he wants to do for you. Amen? In Luke 4.18, it said that Jesus was anointed to preach the gospel to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted. If you're brokenhearted, God can heal you. He can heal it. Amen? Bring liberty to the captives. If you've been taken captive by things in your life, circumstances, situations, he wants to set you free from it. Hallelujah. Bring sight to the blind. You see, some people haven't been able to see the right way, the right path, the right thing to do. And they've made mistakes because of it. And he said, I want to recover sight to the blind. Sight to the blind so you can see, so you can do what you need to do. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. 
They're ordered by the Lord. We need to see the steps he has in place for us so that we can move forward to do what he wants to do. Amen? And also to set, to set free the oppressed. If you've been oppressed, God wants to set you free. God wants you to set you free. If you'll put the word of God in you, if you'll pray, if you will seek God, go after God, get some help, get some counsel, do whatever you need to do so that you can get free from the things that have entrapped you and tried to hold you captive. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Psalms 103, 12, it says, as far as the east is from the rest, from the west so has he removed our transgressions he's removed them he's removed them he wants to get them out of your life so they have no influence on you at all cheers nice water hallelujah and you, he doesn't even remember it the only one who remembers is the enemy and he wants to bring it up and, and bring accusation against us say well remember when you did this 10 years ago and if he does that, you go to him and say, hey, you remember when Jesus uh, shed his blood and he forgave me for that? Uh, so I don't know what you're talking about. Go, go peddle it somewhere else, you know? Amen. Paul says, forgetting the past. Forgetting the past. Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 12. It says, not that I've already attained or am already perfected, but I press on. You see, none of us have been perfected. None of us have obtained, but we press on. And he says, Paul says, that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid a hold of me. He says, brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those which, things which are ahead. Forgetting those things which are behind. To loose out of your mind. To neglect it. And you know, there's some things you just need to forget about. You know. And when it comes up, deal with it. Get out of here. Be gone in Jesus' name. Amen. Forgetting those things which are behind. And reaching forward to those things which are ahead. And it says, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. And there, there was an old movie. Uh, uh, it may have been Cannonball Run or something like that where these cars were racing across the United States and this one dude, they hop in the car to take off and the first thing the guy does is he tears the rear view mirror off the windshield, throws it out of the car and the guy says, his, his co-driver says, what are you doing? He goes, that, we don't need to see where we're coming, where we were, we need to see where we're going. Um, that'll preach, amen? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Isaiah 43, when he talks about, behold, he's going to do, do a new thing, he said, do not remember the former things. If you focus always on the former things, on the negative things, the mistakes you made, you'll never ever catch the new thing he wants you to do or catch the vision and the direction he wants you to walk in, in the, when it comes. You know, woe is me, too, too bad, you know. Don't matter anyhow kind of an attitude, you know. You got to get rid of that. You got to get rid of that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's time to arise and go over. It's time to arise and go over. Hallelujah. In, in, uh, it means come out of your lethargy, a state of abnormal drowsiness or prolonged sleep, apathy, inactivity, or indifference. It means no concern or interest. So you can get to the point, well, it don't matter. What, what good is it for me to do anything? Get up and start moving. Get up, start believing. Start, start reading. Start preparing. What do you feel God's called you to do? Then you've got to prepare for it. Amen? If you're, if you're, if you're going to get a job, you have to have some experience in some things or you might need some training. If you need some training in something, get the training so you can go out and get the job you need to do. Amen? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe, like I said, it's a season of opportunity. I believe we're coming into a season of opportunity where we're in the middle of what seems to be a famine, when the middle of the economy seems to be just in the toilet, okay? It's a season of opportunity. It's time for a reset. It's time for a renew. It's time to remind us of the things that God has said and to reassign us 
in the direction he wants to go. There may be some things that he's going to change for you. Things are going to change. Hallelujah. People have been talking about church. Church isn't going to be the same. Church isn't going to be the same. Well, especially not for a while. You know, we, there's some things that, that we are going to be required to do, like not have children's ministry for a few weeks. Okay? And so there's some things we're doing, and, and we've got to change some things. And, and, but I believe that, that, that the Spirit of the Lord is going to show up big time. Big time. Amen? Sunday is Pentecost Sunday. I'm looking forward for, for God to come and, and just minister and bless His people in a real way. Hallelujah. Proverbs 4, 4 says, The path of the just is like the sun that shines ever brighter and brighter. You know, you may be in darkness now, but it's going to get brighter. Okay? It's going to change. It's going to get better. It's going to get better, 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 better. Hallelujah. Amen. Rise up. You're the head, not the tail. You're above and not beneath. Okay? You're an overcomer. You're more than a conqueror. That's what the Bible says. We're not going to roll over. We're going to go over. Okay? Don't roll over. Go over. Hallelujah. Don't just roll over and say, I'm just going to stay in bed. Get up. Arise. Go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Philippians 1.6 says, Being confident of this very thing that he's begun a good, he that's begun a good work in me is going to perform it. It's going to complete it. He'll do his part if we'll do ours. Okay? You can guarantee that. You know, Paul says, he says, I'm persuaded. Man, I'm confident. I'm persuaded. I'm convinced. Okay? Be convinced in what God can do, what he's able to do, and what he will do for you. Amen? Hallelujah. Sometimes we, we say, well, I just want to stay here. It's, re it's really comfortable. It's really comfortable. And I'm, I'll tell you, you know, you can get so busy, and, and there's times it's like, in this lockdown, you know, there'd be nights we're just sitting watching movies or something, and you go, oh, man, I could just stay here for hours. But you can't live there, okay? Sometimes you need a break, but you can't just stay there forever. Glory to God. Glory to God. It's kind of how we see things. And so I want to read something from, this is uh, Chris Vallotton's book, Heavy Rain. I highly recommend it. But uh, he, he makes a statement in here. <clears throat> Excuse me. He said, we must consider the fact that our eschatology could rob us of our legacy. He said, remember the secret things belong to the Lord our God, but the things revealed belong to us and to our sons forever. Deuteronomy 29, 29. He says, prophetic revelation unlocks the hidden treasures that are to be handed down from generation to generation. But in order for us to prophesy the future and let's lay a foundation for multi-generational inheritance, we must believe there's supposed to be a future. I mean, even in this, this coronavirus thing, there's people that they would, you know, they'd be, you know, asking questions and not necessarily people from our church, but people outside. Is this the end? Jesus is coming back. It's all done, you know. And he says here, he says, in the winter of 2007, he said, the Lord spoke to me saying, the spirit of fatalism and the spirit of martyr is, martyrdom are holding back the apostolic age. Fatalism refuses to acknowledge positive advancement on the earth, looks for the earth to erode instead of evolve. It forces scriptures such as Isaiah 9, 7, there will be no end to the increase of his government or of peace into a distant time zone that presents them from inspiring hope for the coming generations. The church is notorious for using fear as a primary motivator to get people to come into the kingdom. We need to make sure that we don't build partnership with terrorist spirits, believing we can drive people to God because there's no fear in love and is, uh, and is actually the kindness of God that leads us to repentance. That's Romans 2.4. So it's very difficult to keep people in the kingdom who have been driven there predominantly by the fatalist eschatology. That is so true. I remember when I got saved back in 1971, I got saved in the Jesus movement in Western Pennsylvania. And, and I know a lot of times you'd go to a service and, and the person that was speaking or whoever the leading the meeting would stand up and say, you know, uh, Jesus could return tonight. You need, to, you need to get saved right now because he could come tonight and this thing could be all over. And so people out of fear would run to the altar. But a few months later, they were gone.
because it's like you can't you can't get people to out of fear to respond they have to respond from a heart and and let the spirit of god move upon them amen and even back then i mean people talk about how did prayer get out of the schools prayer got out of the schools because one lady went after it and we had a, we had the body of christ that thought we're waiting for everything to get so bad so jesus will return and so they let them rob prayer out of the schools because they thought that's another step down the ladder another spiral down making things worse so that jesus will return and we've got to get that out of our head jesus said occupy until i come arise go over move forward let's advance amen hallelujah i'm gonna preach myself happy glory to god hallelujah hallelujah another thing he said in the third verse of uh, joshua 1 he said every place the sole of your foot will tread i have given it to you the bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the lord so if god is ordering your steps he you may find yourself in a place that that you go well i haven't been this way before hello that's true you're going to find yourself in places you haven't been before dealing in situations you've not dealt before but the reason you're there is because god's guided you there because he's given you the wisdom the insight and he's going to grow you in that to where you can be the people that have the answers to the problems in people's lives and so you go i just don't like this i don't like this god may have ordained you to be that way so be who god made you to be bless you amen hallelujah hallelujah and so it doesn't matter on circumstances. Circumstances, a condition, a fact or event, accompanying or con accompanying conditioning or determining another event. All right? There's circumstances that come to try to stop us, keep us from moving forward, all of those things. And we got to keep doing it. We got to keep moving. Amen? The Bible says, many are the afflictions of the righteous. The Lord delivers us out of them all. Amen? Let's keep moving forward hallelujah hallelujah walk it out work it out requires decisions and action decisions and action when abram was called out of his country out of his tribe his family he says god says i'm going to take you to a place but i'm going to show you where you're going to go and so he took him and he got there and and then there's a little rift between him and lot and and he says now go over here and and, and you choose and Lot took what seemed to be the better, and Abram got what was left, and, and God went out and said, now look, every place you can see. And then he told him, walk the land, every place your foot goes. He says, I've given you this, this is yours, this is yours. And so we gotta walk it out, we gotta work it out sometimes, amen? Work's not a bad thing, it's a good thing, hallelujah, hallelujah. We have enough promises right now to take the world. How many promises are in your life? How many of them did you forget in the lockdown? Did you still believe? Do you still believe? You should still believe because God is still God. He's still in charge. Amen. He's moving on our behalf. This thing is going to turn quickly. This thing's going to turn quickly. This economy is going to turn quickly. People are going to be rescued. Businesses are going to be rescued in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some have not been believing God for what he already said. When he, he was taking the Israelites in, he told Joshua, cross over this Jordan to the land I'm giving my people. I have given it to them. All you got to do is go walk it out. See, there's promises that God makes in our life, and he says, now just go walk it out. Walk it out. Work it out. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Joseph waited like 17 years for the promise to come to pass, but he never let go of it. He never let go of it. How can you tell? The way he carried himself, the way he, the way he, he uh, did what he was doing. Amen. If God spoke it to you, it'll come to pass. It's all in his time. It's all God's timing. All right. If we'll be faithful, if we'll be faithful, God is, God is always faithful. We need to be faithful. We need to stick to it. We need to not give up. Amen. God's promises define 
our tomorrows. God's promises define our tomorrows. What happens tomorrow is the promises that God makes and what we do with the promises. Do we believe it? Do we start acting like it? Expecting it? Amen? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God always speaks of potential. He speaks of potential. We have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power might be of God and not of us. And so it's not all about us. So when God starts using us, we don't go, hey, look at me. Wow, I'm all this in a bag of chips. No, we're just, we're just blessed by the anointing of God. The anointing of God, is, he gets all the glory and just, well, we just, we, we got to come along for the ride. Hallelujah. It's fun. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God's promises keeps us focused on what we are doing and going to do. His promises keep us focused on what we're supposed to be doing and what we're going to do. Amen? Hallelujah. And verse 4, he says, you're going to prosper. You're going to prosper. Now, sometimes when we say that word prosper right away, people talk, you know, well, multimillionaire with, with a, a $10,000 10, square foot house, $10,000 house, 10,000 square foot house. All right. Uh, you know, we got an eight, eight, eight or 10 car garage full of, uh, custom cars and and Bugattis and all of that stuff, but uh, to prosper means intelligence, wisdom, to act wisely, to have good success, to make to understand, amen. To make to understand. Sometimes when God wants to prosper you, He just wants to give you the understanding, the wisdom, and the things in your life so that you'll prosper in all that you do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He'll bless you to carry out what is needed. He'll bless you to do it. He's come to seek and to save that which is lost. He's come to destroy or outdo the works of the enemy. Amen. Sometimes we're in a battle. But we win. We win. Read the last book. We win. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now God does, God does bless our finances. Okay, but, it, but it's, it's not just finances. It's not always finances. He said, I'll, my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. All of your needs, not all our wants. You know, sometimes we look and, you know, I like cars. I see some cars sometimes and I'm going, yeah, I really need that. No, that's what I want. Doesn't mean I need it. Amen. But uh, that's okay. God sometimes will bless you. Let you have stuff like that. Amen. Hallelujah. Obedience brings the blessing. Disobedience causes delay. Disobedience causes delay. Obedience brings the suddenlies. God will suddenly come. God will suddenly do. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, there's a story I remember uh, a pastor and, and uh, this pastor was, was looking to purchase a, uh, a home. It was a, uh, like a townhouse home. And uh, so he went to look at one uh, that uh, was for sale. And uh, uh, in fact, that may have been, may have been like a model. And it was locked and they couldn't get in to see it. And so the realtor says, well, come on, there's, there's one for sale around the corner. We'll go over there and we'll, it's the same layout, everything's the same. And we'll see if, they, uh, if they'll let us look at it. And so they went around and, and they went up and knocked on the door and said, hey, can we, we're, we're looking to buy a, 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 a townhome here and, and we understand yours is like the model and can we, can we just see what it's like inside so we have an idea. I said, sure, come on in. So they came in and they looked around and said, oh, very nice, you know. And it turns out the people that had this townhome that was for sale, they were missionaries. They were missionaries and they were getting ready to go on the mission field. And so they said that God had told them to give this house away. And he says, we were just praying about it and saying, God, who do we give it to? And you come to look at it. So this, this is yours, free. And they gave it to him. Now that's a blessing of the Lord. That's a suddenly. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Another thing he said, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. Get it inside of you and let it come out of you. You know, what, we, what, what comes out of our mouth sometimes defeats us. You know, we have to be careful what we say. You know, because you know, life and death, like I always say, is life and death in the power of the tongue. That's what the scripture says. And so we have to be careful of our words. Careful how you say things. Careful what you say. Amen. Be nice. Don't be judgmental. Don't be critical. Okay? I mean, it's very sad sometimes when you, you get on social media and, and uh, I was on there. Uh, sorry, we're having trouble playing this video. Come here. I don't know if you can still see me. Just a second. It looks like it's still going. I don't know. Let, let me get on my phone. Just keep talking. All right. Maybe you're still on there. I just, I can't see my picture, but I don't have to see it. Well, well, hang on. Let me just say, check something out. So we need to believe and speak the word. Believe means to build up support, to be firm, to trust, to have assurance. Hallelujah. Believe and observe to do all, to see, to watch. Amen. He said it says he will he will give us a love for his word. I love that. You know, the more you you get into the word, the more you begin to read the word. In, in the word is sweet like honey. It brings life. It brings life. It brings encouragement. Helps you. Helps you. Helps you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he's going to give us a love for the word. And if you have a love for the word and you're, you're reading the scripture, he's going to give you revelation in it. It's going to give you understanding. Amen. Understanding so that you know what to do in your life. You know how to handle your life and, and, and do the things you need to do in, in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. And so Ephesians 1. Let me read Ephesians 1. Ephesians chapter 1. And verse 16, it says, do not, He said, I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. The eyes of your understanding be enlightened, that you might know what is the hope of His calling, what are the riches of the glory of His inheritance in saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Supernatural power. Supernatural ability that he'll do in our life. Amen. And last but not least, it says, he says again, be strong and of good courage. Be strong and of good courage. Don't be afraid or be dismayed. Amen. Don't be afraid or be dismayed. Hallelujah. Courage is the, is the capacity to meet danger or difficulties with firmness. That's courage. To be dismayed means to put as a loss from surprise, fear, disappointment, to cause to lose spirit or confidence, to be beat down and discouraged. Hmm. Hallelujah. Don't break under it. Get breakthrough. Amen. God wants us to be strong and be courageous. God has things he wants us to do. There's places we need to go, things we need to do. And I believe, like I said, we're coming into a season of opportunity. And so I believe in that, that God is going to come through for us if we'll stick to it. Amen. If you've been waning a little bit, if you've been pulling back a little bit, you know, not sure what's going to do. I pray that God will encourage you. The Spirit of God will come upon you. The Spirit of God will stir you. The Spirit of God will cause you to press back in. The Spirit of God will cause you to move like never before in Jesus' name. 
And I pray right now in the name of Jesus, I pray for every demonic force that's tried to bury you, tried to take you out, tried to pull you down. I break the power of it in the name of Jesus. And I speak forth the, the Spirit of the Lord to come upon you, to quicken you, to bring encouragement to you, to give you dreams at night that will encourage you, cause things to change in your life, cause the good things of God to come upon your life. And it will come and bless you, bless you, bless you abundantly that God will support surprise you and he will blow your mind about the good things he's going to do in this season amen the naysayers are going to have to eat their words because god is still god amen hallelujah amen amen well god's good god's good so like i said we're going to be back in service on sunday morning at 10 o'clock we will get you the information and we may have a reservation system because we only have so many seats. Um, and so we may have you, okay, if you're coming, let us know and we'll, we'll, we'll save you a seat. But we'll let you know about that. And then on Wednesday nights, we're going to continue to do these Wednesday night Facebook lives for the, for the near future uh, until we get everything opened back up and, and everything's flowing. And we'll decide then uh, the changes we're going to make. Amen? So, yeah, so... So we're, we're praying, pray for us, but we can't wait to see you guys. Can't wait to, to, to uh, you know, at least do a uh, how you doing uh, kind of thing. And, and uh, so we'll practice the social distancing like they want us and we'll behave. Uh, <laughs> amen. So God bless you. We love you. We miss you. Can't wait to see you. You have a wonderful night. Amen. Bless you.